closer. Hi, welcome in. I'm Robin. We're about to do a crochet market. Let's do it. It's going to be a really long video. Go grab a whip and sit down and hang out. Howdy. It is Saturday, January 27th. I just got, um, I upgraded my phone. So hopefully the camera is a little bit better. Um, it has an extra eyeball, it sounds like. I just wanted to let you guys know that I went to Michael's and they had all of the yarn that I have been needing in my life. I think in my last vlog I told you I needed yellow. I got yellow and I got pink. This is for blush and dresses and stuff. So I got yellow and pink and I didn't take all of the colors of everything that they had there. I'm trying to be courteous, but I definitely loaded up because I needed it. And I think they finally had them in stock because the sale turned off. Like it's no longer buy one, get one half off. I don't mind spending an extra 50 cents to have the colors that I need. When I do my spreadsheet, I calculate the full price of the skein, which is, um, I think it's $10 or $11 with tax. So I price the full amount of the skein when I do my spreadsheet. So I'm not necessarily losing anyway, but definitely got the yarn that I needed. So happy in the middle of making my own like Nezuko style um, kind of doll and then I'm going to make a bunny and a onesie via I think it's Abby something uh, bunny and a onesie pattern very excited so that's my plan for the rest of today hey so I'm sitting here finishing Nezuko I'm putting her bow on and I'm like halfway through a bunny the bunny and a onesie pattern and I just got a notification on Instagram that I was chosen to pattern test for somebody and it's my first time pattern testing and I can't wipe the smile off my face. Um, I think it's Cozy Wonder Crochet and I'm going to just drop everything that I'm doing right now and start if she sends the pattern right now. But whenever she sends the pattern, I am starting right away, you guys. It's not like I don't know how to read a pattern. I've just never been chosen to pattern test. I've applied to so many of them. I'm going to put an image of which one I'm going to be testing and obviously I will show you when I finish what it looks like and I will be posting all about it. Very excited. Oh, I feel so blessed, you guys, because I, you know, want to help provide information to the person who created the pattern and I just feel like, at least on Instagram, I have like a hundred and something followers, so which is, you know, compared to people who get chosen to pattern test typically, not would not be me but okay I'll keep you posted just popping in while I'm finishing um this bunny I'm thinking for my bunnies since I'm gonna be making like a slew of different sizes um and now that I have I bought the pattern for the onesie I can size the onesie up and down depending on um you know if I make like what's her name Loretta Loops bunny which is like they make it's a medium-sized bunny or if I make the bear modification bunny, which is a little tiny little squishy bunny, or this one, which is the original like extra large bunny. This is actually the pattern from I uh, am I Abby, I believe. This is my first time saying it, um, which is the onesie pattern with the bunny. I'm really grateful she includes the bunny pattern with it. Um, you know, she doesn't have to do that, and she did, which is nice. Um, I need to work on not saying, um. It's hard because I'm in my decreasing round, so I'm, I have to kind of count when I'm decreasing. Unfortunately, that's how my brain works. Okay, I'm almost done. So I wanted to make my bunnies naked. I want to have all my naked um, different size bunnies, and then I'm going to provide clothing, like, I don't know, on a little hanger rack so that people can choose to purchase the clothing or like the little hats like um so i don't want obviously the bunnies to be too expensive uh, for people i want them to be able to choose to like buy the bunny with clothing so normally i'll sell a big bunny with a dress for like 55 dollars um because of all the stuff right but i'm thinking maybe the bunny will be 40 bucks and then the dress or maybe 45 and then the dress will be 10 and the hat will be 10 so they can make a full on dressed up bunny like that's what I'm, that's what my vision is i don't know if financially that those will be the price points but right now because i'm making the naked bunnies 
<laughs> I'm thinking that's what I'm gonna do. And then as soon as I'm done with this bunny, since I was already, I already got all the pieces, I'm so far in, you know, and we're, I have the head. I'm so far in with this bunny, I'm gonna just finish it up, put it together, and then I'm gonna do the pattern test that I was chosen for. I wanna just say thank you so much. Um, I wasn't ever expecting to get chosen for a pattern test. Uh, again, I only have like 100 followers on Instagram and I really do try to make everything look beautiful. I mean, I'm trying to sell, I'm selling these items. So I'm trying to make them best I can and follow the patterns to a T. I need to make everything look consistent because I'm selling them. And I just can't believe I was chosen to pattern test for somebody. I understand there's a lot of stuff that goes along with it, like the deadline, and I need to make sure everything's right, you know, like spell checking. But I'm really grateful to get the opportunity to, to work on this. Um, and thank you to the person who created the pattern um, because that is hard, you know. Okay, I'm gonna finish the bunny. With the pattern creators, I wanna just say I tried creating my own pattern and I mean, I modify patterns all the time. I have so much respect for you and you do so much work and it takes so much time that you invest into this, you know, PDF file for everyone to create and everyone is grateful. And I wanna just say thank you to people who create patterns. I purchase patterns all the time and I really am grateful that they exist. I'm willing to spend the money and I'm grateful um, to people who put in the time to create patterns. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you if you're a pattern creator. You're much appreciated. Hey, so last night I finished the bunny. I didn't make the onesie because I wanted to start the pattern test and I made all the pieces. I messaged her. Um, I'm gonna wait to make the finish the face because I want to make my own, um, I wanna hand paint my own safety eyes which are coming today that I can paint today. So I'm very excited. That's where I'm at right now. I'm going to make a baby blue onesie and I think a mint onesie for potentially the bunnies, and just keep going. That, that's my plan for today. I did it! I need little buttons, but you guys, oh my goodness, and the ears. This um, onesie took me an embarrassing amount of time. Obviously, you can't charge for time when it's your first time doing a pattern, so I can't. I'm not going to, obviously, do anything about that, but I'm going to add a little cloud, I think. Oh, it's just so cute! Um, I think I'm going to make it like a little cloud onesie. Um, and I definitely did something wrong uh, with this one. It's supposed to have three loops. I know I only had the space under the chin to do two loops. Um, my name, I made my bunny correct. Everything about the bunny's right. But something, I'm, I did something here. So I only have two loops uh, for buttons. But uh, for my first time making a onesie, I mean, I feel pretty good about it. Looks pretty cute. And I can't wait to make all the colors. It just took me, the onesie took me as long as the bunny. But I do plan on, at this market, making a bunny, I'm thinking, a bunny boutique. So I'm going to have one CNC grid or like table section with all of the little, I want to hang them. I want to have little hanging. I'm going to have this. I'll have the pink dress and the, I have that bear hat. And I'm thinking um, of doing like people could have, you know, like mommy and me, like matching. I'm thinking of making like a little sprout for the bunnies that can clip onto the bunny. And then, a, you know, the, the person, like the person buying the plushie can have their own sprout clip or they can have like their own little bear ear clips. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking maybe I'm going to go to the dollar store um, and I need to go to Joanne's because I'm going to get the felt to, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking a lot of stuff and I think I need wire to make it stand up. I have a lot of thoughts right now of the bunny, like, really focusing on the bunnies um it is my favorite thing to crochet and I for sure enjoy it and it, you know even if it takes me a while me having that spark of wanting to finish it is how I'm getting stuff done I've had a couple things like sitting around like whips I've had sitting around for a while and the one thing that I never let sit that I noticed is a bunny so people I've you know ran out of my regular bunnies I, I only have Christmas bunnies left basically and I have those two big ones you saw in my last market so I'm excited hey guys I just stopped by Joann's it's Sunday so they have you know new coupons that just came out and I got my rewards for last month so I basically got all this stuff like super sale but I just wanted to let you guys know I'm going to be painting my own safety eyes because I think they're super cute and financially I think I can do it myself 
So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I got the paint and some glitter. The, hand, the eyes are getting delivered today. And I got these pretty buttons because I'm gonna put them on the bunny onesies. I think they're super cute and they're the colors I'm gonna be using for them anyway. I got some pliers and felt and wire and I'm gonna be making little sprout hair clips um, so people can have a little bunny sprout, um, sprout on their bunny and they can also have a sprout on them. Thought that was gonna be a good idea so we'll see how it goes. Good morning. It is Tuesday. I just wanted to give you guys an update. I don't feel like I've updated you about what I've made for some reason. I think I told you guys about the pattern test. Uh, I got Chip the Squirrel. I made Chip the Squirrel. Oh my goodness. And I did those safety eyes. Guys, my station looks, it, it honestly was worse last night. I cleaned it up, but it's looking insane. So this is Chip, and I made him like a girlfriend. I didn't give her a tail yet, but here's his girlfriend. Let's call her Chipette. She needs a tail, but she's got a little dress. It made a ruffle. I don't know. Um, I'm going to send a message to her today about me adding the skirt. I don't know if I can submit this as a photo for her test. Obviously, Chip is the test. And then I made a bunch of Kirby shells. Um, I need to stuff them. I'm going to add the eyes. I'm getting a Cricut tomorrow. And on the Cricut, I'm going to make those, those felt eyes for Kirby. And then I made the overall bunny, but I added the things that needed to be added. So I added the buttons and I bring into this little cloud. Tell me if you think that that's a cloud. I think it's a cloud. My boyfriend doesn't think it's a cloud, <laughs> but I don't know. Um, little cloud onesie with the bunny and then I started because that's an extra large bunny so last night if I can find the, I made little heads so I'm just starting to like market prep more bunnies so I made this they got blue eyes um, so there's one head and then here's another head this will be like a medium-sized bunny I'm using I believe it's Loretta loops pattern for this one um, this one was, am I, I am, I, am I Abby? Am I Abby? Yeah. And she's got this little, uh, adorable Penelope, the pig pattern. That's, um, she's going to be testing soon. I believe I applied to test, but wow, it's so cute. So when that comes out, I'm excited to crochet her pig. Um, just like how we've got these, uh, bunnies. Very excited. That's what I've got going on so far. I've done a little bit of the safety eye painting. I'm still refining what I'm doing here, but I mean, this is my first go at it and they're really sparkly and pretty. I'm getting some of the kawaii like moon, uh, moon shaped ones. They're coming in later today, so we'll see how those go. They'll probably be super cute, but yeah, I added, I mean, some of these are actually pink, but they're showing up blue. Really cute. So that was that was fun to paint. That's all I have going on right now. I have to go to work, but after work, I'm going to do more bunnies. And um, with the Cricut, I'm gonna be making some stickers, I believe, and possibly some totes. Before I do the stickers and the totes for the market, um, I do want to refine my logo. This is not my logo, but I wanna refine my logo so that I can sublime it if that's what it's called, heat transfer it onto um, some shirts because I want to bring some like branded merchandise so that me and my papa, he's coming with me this weekend. I have two markets in a row. I've got a farmer's market on Saturday and on Sunday it's like a regular craft fair. Um, and this regular craft fair is actually from the same people that I had my second ever market at so I did really that was my best market financially that I've done so it's the same people who are hosting hopefully I'll have good turnout again it's actually in the same area so I hope to have better turnout than when I did this last like two weekends ago so we're still in January but we're marching into February just about and I'm going to be making my t-shirts and then maybe focusing on stickers and some tote bags and then obviously finishing um, the stuff I've got going on with crochet. 
I started this mini free axolotl pattern. This is actually the butt, and I still have to make the head, but I did it lose. Well, I lost in yarn chicken, honestly, so <laughs> I need to, um, I actually got another skein, so gotta finish that little axolotl, but see you later. Howdy! Tuesday night, I got the paint, I got the balls, eyeballs. I'm painting safety eyes. Currently painting pink because it's my favorite color. Pink girls, pink girls. Although I know there are not pink girls, so I also got blue <laughs> and green. And I'm thinking I wanna name all the colors and I've got a couple ideas for what I wanna name the colors. Like I've got different, got some ideas. I play League of Legends. Ooh. I play League of Legends. So I was thinking of having them name like rift names like different names on the rift like the gold one because lux is like light goddess i was gonna do like i don't know somehow named after lux like maybe one of her skins i i'm just thinking so i'm thinking either my safety eyes like if i do put them out for sale you know if i do that they'll have either like league of legend themed names or i was thinking like emotional names, like Envy. I don't know, it just felt, it felt, I, I looked at the green and I felt like that should be called Envy. Or it'll be called Zyra, <laughs> so because you know, you know, you know. <laughs> so I'm thinking of like different themed names I could try and give these safety eyes once they're all done. And I have other things to tell you. Uh, I finished Chip. And I got the yarn to finish his girlfriend's tail. I didn't have another brown furry color. I've only purchased one skein of furry yarn and it was the color I used for him. I needed a different one for his girlfriend. So I did get that today. I also got pink fuzzy yarn and I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's very cute. And I today I got chosen to test for Am I Abby? She is the one uh, this morning, actually, like if you fast forward, not even probably two minutes, um, I was talking about her bunny pattern that I purchased on Kofi. Um, yeah, I it, it had been in my Etsy cart for a week and I finally was like, okay, I'm going to make it. I'm going to purchase it. And I went to go purchase it on Etsy and it, the listing was deleted. And so I messaged her and she sent me to her Kofi. So I purchased that right away. I made the bunny pattern, super excited. I am taking the cloud off, by the way. I realized I don't really enjoy the cloud on it. So I'm gonna take the cloud off. Maybe I'll embroider a flower on it for the bunny that I made. But I got chosen to pattern test for her, am I Abby? Uh, after I finished Chip, I applied for Penelope because I keep seeing previews of her and she's the cutest pig. Um, and obviously I'm following the creator. She's got all the bunny stuff. So I'm following her with like the bunny stuff. And then she posted this cute piggy. And so I applied to pattern test. And this is the second pattern test I've ever gotten chosen for. And it was like two, two in a row. Uh, I mean, I've applied for other ones in between there, but I just, I'm beyond myself. I feel like honored to be chosen. And then also I think it's really fun um, in an editorial way to read like the raw pattern and then, you know, find anything if there is anything. I feel like that's really like proofreading. I, I, I've been enjoying it. It's like, I'm not just going through the pattern, you know, like I'm going through a pattern that I paid for that I know, you know, it's like I have to focus and go slow and pay attention and make sure like I'm, like, I'm counting right because I got to make sure that counts right, you know. So I, I think the pattern testing, at least for me, I've been, I hadn't been chosen ever before. And I, I've read a ton of patterns and it just feels so good to be chosen. <laughs> Choose me, pick me. Yes, that's, you know, embarrassing, but it definitely has been feeling on top of the moon to be chosen for pattern tests. So I already finished Chip and I'm just going to send her the photos because we already did the feedback. Um, I want to make... Yesterday was, or today was really gloomy when I took the photos. I want them to stand out with like the sun, but Florida wasn't very sunny this morning. So uh, I'm going to do Penelope the pig tonight. As soon as I finish, I'm going to make her, I think I'm going to make her bright pink eyeballs or blue. I feel like blue would probably stand out more, but pink is just going to be so cute. Pink sparkly eyes with her. And I don't know what color her overall should be yet, but she is, I'm so stoked to make her. And I'm excited. Papa's going to be with me. I'm spending the night at Papa's house, which is going to be 
interesting. Uh, and I know I'm just going to be up so late probably crocheting just because I can't help it. Uh, it's like, I, I mean, I'm doing it, I'm selling it now, but it's like a coping mechanism. So coping with stress for the market by staying up super late and crocheting for the market. <laughs> make it make sense. But I just wanted to hop on here and tell you guys what I was doing. I can't believe I got chosen for Penelope. And if am I Abby, if you happen to be watching this, thank you so much. You can't imagine how much you made my day by just like choosing me. And I will do my very best to pattern test as well as I can for you. Oh, hold the phone. I did want to tell you that I got, instead of getting two four foot tables and a six foot table, I got two six foot tables, which I've had one of them, and a four foot table, which I've had. So it's gonna be like a U, but like kind of like a whoop, like this. This is how I'm gonna be. So this this is gonna be the four foot table and I'm gonna be behind it and it's gonna be like a little checkout. I got a little cubby to put like bags um, so that my checkout station's more uniform and I will show you that in my, uh, I'll show you that when I do it. But this is what I'm envisioning. I got a little cubby for like my thank you cards and all that stuff. Um, and actually I have two sets of thank you cards, one set for regular plushies that I've made that can be washed in the washing machine because most of the yarn I use can be washed in the washing machine on delicate. The problem is all the stuff that I'm hand painting like this or things that have buttons or accessories or anything tiny that like safety eyes, normal safety eyes are fine. Those can withstand a gentle cycle in a bag, garment bag. But these safety eyes, I do not want, I do not want people to put this in a washer just in case. So I'm having two sets of thank you cards. I probably should just have the one that says hand wash only, but I want to give people the option because I feel like it's definitely easier to put it in a garment bag and wash it in a washing machine. So two thank you cards and then all the bags and I'm going to have a checkout at the four foot table. I'm thinking normal checkouts, people have like little mini items and like, so I'm gonna have like stickers and a stickers. And then I'm thinking of like putting my little froggies there because those are tiny, quick and affordable. Um, so I'm thinking of having like those little items there and then all my big ticket items with like all the thematic, I don't even know if that's the word, but with all the thematic sections, I tested the waters last time and I really liked how that worked out with like the setup with like the categories of items. So I'm gonna keep that. Just gonna switch up how many tables I have. I only had two last time, so I'm doing three. We're kicking it up a notch. We're gonna see how that goes. Maybe not be so crowded. Um, hopefully make it look good. Just painted myself. I will see you later, bye. Hey, it's Wednesday night. When I was at work today, I got a notification that I got chosen for another pattern test. This video market week video is absolutely insane i had a list of things i had ideas that i was thinking of making which included like bunnies um like i bought am i abby am i by abby's bunny pattern um and obviously i applied for pattern tests because I've, i have time to do them and i you know i got picked for three patterns this week i'm beyond myself every time i'm just literally jumping for joy but i got a notification when I was at work that am I by Abby chose me for her Penelope the pig pattern and Penelope the pig is so stinking cute uh, I saw her on my feed last week I want to say I kept seeing the little piggy pop up and she posted the pattern test and I applied and she chose me and it's just ironic because I I bought her bunny pattern the day before, not even the day before, and made it the night before. So I was familiar actually with her style of patterning. Um, and I got the pattern and I made Penelope the pig. And this is her with the onesie on that I made for the bunny, but I did make the overalls. So I made her little yellow overalls. I need to weave in my ends and I'm gonna add little daisies, I think, to them. She feels feels like a daisy kind of girl. But let me take, her, but the bunny uh, onesie with the ear holes fit perfectly. So if you happen to purchase um, Penelope the pig pattern and you already have Am I by Abby's onesie pattern or the bunny onesie, it works. It fits perfectly. And personally, what I'm envisioning doing is having like a bunny boutique um, at, my, at my table. I don't even know if this is going to work, okay? But I'm envisioning because I love it. Uh, having a bunny boutique. Um, and because they're about the same size, I'm going to have the bunny with the piggy and maybe multiple of all of them 
with their outfits. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna let, I'm thinking of letting people choose which outfit they wanna put on the plushies. The only thing that's really possibly stopping me from doing this is the on and off of dressing and undressing them because I don't want to wear the plushies out with just people wanting to try clothes on them. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna have like a disclaimer on my table, like, oh, if you're trying, like, please don't try on the outfits, they will fit, kind of, I don't, does that make sense? What I'm saying makes sense. I just don't want people to, I'm gonna have like maybe little hangers with the little outfits on them because they all fit, like the large plus, plushies will fit the large outfits. I, and like dresses, so they'll be like dresses and overalls and the onesies. And I don't want people to put them on and off and on and off and on and off because that can just wear it out before the person who actually gets it, gets it. And my Cricut came, I have not unpacked that yet, but the Cricut came and I laminated some signage. That's where I'm at right now. And I'm gonna put daisies on this. I need to take pictures of this tomorrow. And then I got chosen for another pattern test, Bean the Bunny. Is this not perfect? Sweet Beans Crochet, Bean the Bunny. And Bean the Bunny is a little tiny, like a little tiny version of this. I'm so excited to compare like the sizes and obviously excited to read the pattern, but I got chosen for uh, Bean the Bunny. <sighs> You guys, and that was created by two pattern creators. Um, I think it's Nana Crochet and one more. I will put them here. I will. I will put them here. I, I will do it. Uh, I can, I'm blanking on their name right now, but I just I'm so excited, you guys. This has just been my pattern test week, but also pattern that I can bring to market week. Um, and reading the patterns and going through them has been really fun for me. It's been working my brain in a different way, so it's really been helping me get through this week. <laughs> hey, I thought we could chat while I commute to work because I'm just, you know, doing my normal routine and I have some things to let you know. So last night I went to do my logo on my like sweatshirts or t-shirts and I realized that I have an inkjet printer but I don't have an Epson inkjet printer. I have an, a Canon inkjet printer and you need special sublimation ink to print on sublimation paper, which now that makes sense. But when I bought the paper, it just said I needed an inkjet printer. I didn't think too much about it. And then when I opened up the package, read the fine print to like for how to print it out, I can't do it. So I'm going to have to return that paper and I got, uh, it's coming today, um, printable heat transfer vinyl. So I'll be able to print my logo out with my printer and heat transfer that onto the sweater. And I have a couple test t-shirts that I can ruin first, uh, which I understand you need to figure out the process first. So maybe I'll bring you along while I try and make my logo shirts, uh, if you're interested in watching me do that for prepping for the market. I'm gonna be doing Bean the Bunny tonight. I think that's about it. I took videos of all of my safety eyes that I've made, all the holographic safety eyes. So I will hopefully be posting about all this stuff soon. I'm just, I'm really bad at like posting on top of making everything. I, I have a really fun time making everything. And then, I mean, I'm sure if you're on social media, you understand. <laughs> like if you make a craft and then you have to post about your craft, like doing your craft is just so much fun. And then when you have to to post about it. It's just, I have a hard time making content that like looks nice because I'm having so much fun doing the project. That makes sense. You guys feel that too. How do you guys make it more fun to film content? Cause I just don't know what I'm doing with, with that. At least like reels, like what am I doing? I stopped, I'm stopping making reels. I'm just going to be posting about the cute stuff I'm making because the posts, um, are more clear with like the product I'm trying to show off anyway versus a reel that's like try to be funny and I don't know how to be funny in a reel so there's that I'm going to work I will see you when I get off and I'll be hopefully not sublimating but heat transferring my shirts okay I just came from inside there I'll need to go to TJ Maxx if you're gonna do markets um I have a couple ideas I was going in there for baby hangers they didn't have any baby hangers they told me to go to home goods so I can't like hang up the outfits unless I go to Home Goods. But they had this turntable, and I'm thinking um, all the different mini five dollar plushies can go in there. Maybe categorized by color, uh, possibly, or anything can go in the turntable. Honestly, even outfits. I could probably put the outfits in the turntable. Uh, the reason I told you guys to run, do not walk, run to TJ Maxx, is because they have these 
display risers. And if you're doing markets, you know these risers are about 20 bucks on Amazon and they are $7 in there. So you can get like two for $14, which is, that saves you some money. Uh, especially if you have one of like put more things on risers. I always have more stuff that could go on the risers that didn't have more risers uh, and they were 20 bucks a piece. So I'm like, go to home goods because you can't find them cheaper unless you go to Timu and even then your shipping is going to be a while. So I got you. Hey, can you just ignore the fact that I look crazy? Okay. Um, I have the Cricut box here and I just wanted to open it with you and show you how freaking massive it is. Okay. Let's just, I was expecting it to be that big, like the printer size, right? Tell me why it is this, you can't, I can't, why is it this big? But it's the Cricut Maker 3, so it should be beautiful. Um, I got the refurbished one because Moolah, and I read reviews saying that um, it was the exact same thing, it could have cosmetic, you know, imperfections. I don't care if there's a dent on the front, as long as it cuts, that's all I really care about. We can all admit that the angle is a little funky, but uh, here's what it's looking like. Uh, let's take it. Okay, here we are. Cricut Maker 3. We looking good? I know, I'm rashing out. Just, I, I'm okay, don't worry. I'm okay, it just happens. It just happens to me. So, says you were meant to make. Heck yeah, we were. And a lot of recycled materials to keep her safe. I have um, bunnies, so they're gonna love to chew on this. <laughs> Unpainted cardboard. Oh, she's so pretty. I don't even know what's wrong with her yet. Why were you on sale, pretty thing? So right off the bat, I mean, I don't see any imperfections, like no dents or scratches. Um, the cellophane's a bit dusty. It's making my hands dusty, but dust ain't gonna hurt nobody. Okay, uh, power cord. And this is, hmm, y'all know what this is? Okay, it's, it's, it says it's smart paper sticker card stock. So it naturally comes with black and white sticker card stock. I didn't order the bundle because I got everything else uh, cheaper on Amazon, or at least I tried to do everything as affordable as I could with this purchase. So I was not trying to, I don't know. I was, I really wanna just test the waters, but obviously I pulled the trigger on getting a cricket. So that's more than testing waters. <laughs> that's all recycling now on to the good stuff i'm gonna put you behind me my messy workstation here by the way i'm painting safety eyes back there so like the mod podge and all that stuff um and my little kakashi figure um that's for like safety eye painting so that's what that's doing over there um my whole goal right now is to heat transfer onto a t-shirt i have a garbage t-shirt that my bestie donated to me my work bestie uh, it's just a plain white shirt that I can um, practice on. So we're gonna do that with this. And I got heat transfer uh, paper. I got it for dark fabric because that means it's white. So I can, it'll be able, it'll let me print my pink onto here, even though it's white. I wanna print, print pink. So that's the goal with that. And let's just open up the cellophane here. I don't really know what's wrong yet. 
I just wanted to maybe let you guys know why I chose the Maker 3. I really was looking into like all the future like possibilities of what I could make with this. And I really enjoyed the fact that this one can engrave and emboss, which if I'm if I want to do any personalizations or if you guys want to do any custom engraving, uh this has the capability.
it's 12.30 and they just told Papa that they will decide if we're closed tomorrow because of the storm. So I will let you know. Just wanted to show you my checkout station here. So we got care cards, bags, bags. tiny bags and sticker bags. Hey, initial, initial thoughts. Uh, the whole car is packed up. Papa is now at his house. I just have my baby girl with me. Um, had a pretty okay day. Uh, unexpected. Everything has been unexpected. The farmer thing did not work out. And then the market turnout was way different than expected. I mean, I was assuming with the place that this was in that it was going to be hot. And for me, uh, it was not hot. There was one other crocheter there who had like a Migurumi. I didn't even have time to see her stuff. I, I didn't, I couldn't get up and, and go because I was by myself. Papa left with her to go potty, but there was another crocheter just there and she walked by at one point and said that it was so slow for her um, because there were no, you know, kids or teenagers and that's kind of our people or like young adults. So um, a lot of, <laughs> which I understand, but like retirement, um, people with no chill like grandchildren or even young um like adult grandchildren or kids uh so it she told me it was a really bad day for her too it wasn't that bad it actually picked up after she said that so maybe it like positively jinxed me but I definitely broke even and with tomorrow rain or shine they just take your money so they just took my money and I ended up not losing basically I made enough today to cover my booth fee for tomorrow that didn't happen so I didn't necessarily profit well um there's a couple other things on top of it being tithing just happened I, I was assuming tithing would be over because it's finally February but that didn't stop everyone start everyone it didn't it didn't create business even though tithing is over and it's going to be raining tomorrow. People think there's a storm warning, even though it's like sunny and you know, it's okay. Uh, I still like it. I still have a good time. It's a lot of work. So maybe planning out, I have something planned where I'm going to be going to a school and that should be good because there are kids at school and there are teenagers at school and that should be better for me. Uh, all of my stuff, by the way, has like safety eye warnings, so don't come at me with that, I know. And actually, I warded off some sales today because people had three-year-old grandchildren and I was like, you need to, I need to custom order, I need to custom make these for you or you can't, you should not buy, like, don't buy this. Uh, or you buy this one because it was safe. Um, but, so I actually warded off some sales, so I'm gonna be going to a school this next month at the end of the month. So I have like three weeks to prepare for it and I think I'm just gonna take my time and crochet for three weeks. I might do weekly vlogs though to see how much stuff I can get done. So if you're okay not watching a market video, my next video should be um, just like vlogging uh, what I make, which I think might be interesting. And I'm gonna be focusing on maybe some freebie, uh, freebie Instagram patterns and um, like brand new, I'm going to brand new purchase patterns. So I'll do a mix of both. So we'll have some free options and I'll, you know, see if I, rec I don't know. I don't know. I just have some ideas, uh, but I know for three weeks, I'm not going to be doing a market. <laughs> so, um, it's also a learning lesson for me, uh, to know that January and February are slower. Uh, and maybe focusing, I know there's a place, I think it's St. Pete there's a school that has an event every month. It's in a school that hosts it. So there are definitely people who go to that school that go, you know what I mean? So maybe focusing on that for at least my products right now. And I'm, you know, I didn't sell one sticker. I spent that time with my Cricut 
making stickers. Stickers did not happen today, but I had $30 worth, so I was prepared. But I'm driving, <laughs> so I'll make a formal video when I get home. Bye. Hi, uh, this is my overview of what I made, what sold, how the market went, all the good stuff, all the fun information about what actually happened after all of the preparation that you just saw. Um, so don't mind me with my iPad here. Uh, this is my spreadsheet. Whoop. This is the spreadsheet I used from Crochet with Bay. Uh, purchased this from her and I filled it all out with all the patterns all and I calculate the yarn I use so it tells me how much I use in supplies. I feel like in all the other videos I've made so far I've forgotten to mention the price of supplies because it has always calculated it for me. So all of the totals I've given you in the past technically were incorrect. Uh, I never subtracted my supplies from what I told you guys. So even though I said I might have made $150 or whatever profit after the booth fee, after food and gas, I still uh, had supply costs. So this time I'm including supply costs because I realized I never mentioned it to you guys before. I always calculate it, but I've never mentioned it to you. So this is going to look slim. <laughs> this is going to look like a slim outcome uh, based on all my prep. Let's just talk about what was supposed to happen, okay? I was supposed to go to two different events. I ended up just trying to go to one event on both days. That I thought that would be more consistent. I could leave my tent up. It'd be much more convenient. Uh, me and my papa, uh, he's got some back issues, so I knew I wouldn't have as much help uh, breaking up and putting down everything. Uh, so we needed to find something a little bit more convenient. So I was trying to do just one place market uh, for two days. Uh, I'm not going to do probably a two day again unless it's like a convention inside or something. I ended up not even doing two days, you guys. This was just one day market. This All of this prep that I just did, all the stuff you just watched and hung out with me. Thank you for hanging out with me, okay? I hope you're crocheting while you're doing this because that's what I do. But uh, it ended up being just that one place the one event. Uh, so I had basically just one market and it was honestly not my worst market. I did not lose. And because technically I paid for two days and tomorrow got canceled because we got rained out. Like it is canceled. So I made the money that I lost technically from that booth. So, okay, let's just get into what sold and then we'll go over the financials at the very end because I like to get through this part. I like to go in chronological order and I feel like it just makes sense to go through the prep, go through what ended up selling and then be like, okay, this is how much money it was. So if you're just here for the money, skip forward, but uh, I'm going to go through everything that sold. <laughs> so I'm just coming in here to let you guys know I'm still learning. Uh, my prices are, I'm still learning how to sell my plushies. I have gone through phases. <laughs> it's been like a month of me selling uh, in person at markets and I'm just learning a lot each time I go to a market. Every single market, even if it's the same market or the same people hosting or the same area, everything, every factor will be different. So everything that I tell you happened to me, you could have a carbon copy of what happened to me or you could have just be like you can never experience this also. So you could go through it or every market is so different. The I've been to, it's like in the same area, uh, a bunch of cash. And like, I didn't, I could not even, I didn't have even enough change to deal with how much cash I was dealing with, um, with everybody, even though I bring the same amount of cash to every event. Uh, by the way, I bring $400 to each event because that's just, that's the sweet spot I found. I do not run out of change if I have $400 of broken change. So Take that as you will. That's what I've realized. Uh, $100 is not enough and $500 is like excessive. But so some markets I will not even, I mean, I took out, I don't even think I took out change. I think I got even dollars um, and a bunch of card transactions. That was the Christmas market that I had or the next market that was in January. It was all cash. I couldn't, I couldn't even, I didn't have enough cash to give people. Uh, the same thing goes with the people that go. So Obviously, during Christmas, I was expecting everyone to go Christmas shopping, and I didn't get much Christmas. Like, the, the Christmas items I had were not really grabbed, and it was more so just the cute stuff, which that's fine. So, like, seasonal items, 
didn't really sell for me that time but for any other person like carbon copy of what I had it could have you could have sold all the Christmas stuff so like you never know or I'm still bringing Christmas stuff and we're in February and today I sold I think my snowman bunny which is it's February and they bought a snowman bunny and it's adorable but it's not season, you know, it's not, I mean, it's not really the season. <laughs> it's not Christmas. I guess he wasn't wearing a Santa hat, but I, you know what I mean? So you never know uh, what's going to happen. So I just wanted to let you guys know, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to sell. You don't know if you're going to sell out of everything. I mean, I've seen people just sell out of everything or you could, I've had like two slow markets in a row and it is slow season. I've heard about it being slow season. Again, I'm feeling the slow season. I don't feel like my prices are incorrect anymore. I feel like now I've been to a couple, I've felt at my audience. I've watched so many crocheters to kind of get a price range. So I'm comfortable with what I could potentially bring home with everything I bring to the market. But also if I just break even, that's kind of my baseline and then obviously getting networking getting my number out there um, giving people my cards which I did a lot of this time so even though I didn't make much of a profit especially because of the two-day market issue there's still future sales to be had and this will not stop from continuing like you're gonna pick back up you're gonna do it again and next time you might sell out you never know so that's my hope for next time uh, because I don't have a market scheduled for a couple weeks, I'm definitely going to be hunkering down with inventory and focusing on things that I've really wanted to do. I've really wanted to make um, turtles. I, I want to make a couple turtles. And I really do want to expand my bunny collection. Um, I'm obsessed with bunnies, but I really do want to hone in on that um, since my logo is bunny, bunny, bunny person, bunny girl, pink, whatever. Um, and I do want to obviously do some of that and I only I only have like three snugglers left so I'm thinking of expanding my snuggler collection however my snugglers um haven't really been selling I don't know it's been we'll see I only made a couple and then those aren't like flying off I'm not, I have not like run out of a snuggler so number one I sold a axolotl from crochet grove paid pattern uh, the one axolotl I typically sell them for $15 this time I accidentally put it in my $12 section, so I charged her $12. And then I had two sleeping birds. I've had the flamingo and the mallard. I sold the flamingo today, she was $20. That was a free Instagram pattern. I think it's from Crochet Crochet and two other people. So that's a free pattern. I had two derpy chicks. <laughs> from another free pattern and I sold one of those. I sold those for $12. I had the large set of bunnies. I had three extra large bunnies. I sold one of them, it was $55. Along with the bunny, um, I paired it or I gave her a discount for buying like a piece of clothing, which I, it was the hat and I charged her $5. So $5 for the hat, 55 for the bunny. So that was a $6 purchase from just one, well, one item with a wearable so that felt pretty good to sell one of my big bunnies uh they're my favorite to make so they're my favorite to make I feel like they're just so cute and I'm grateful that it was purchased it made my day <laughs> and then I had the medium Loretta Loops bunny that I had just made the head of and while I was there at the market I crocheted the rest of the body together and I made these bell bottom overalls uh, so I had put together this Loretta Loops bunny I don't even know if I have a picture of it because I finished it while I was there but it had little bell bottoms on it uh, and that was $30, $35 because it had the bell bottoms and then I had a leftover Christmas bunny I had two leftover Christmas bunnies I had Bunny the Elf and um Frosty the Snow Bunny <laughs> and uh, Frosty the Snow Bunny sold for $30. That's also Loretta Loops. It's just I altered the, I added buttons, which were snowman buttons. Those people happen to like the brown, brown cow. So that's cool. Uh, those are $25. Uh, I've, pre I've stayed pretty consistent. That price uh, has been working. Um, I went from charging a lot the first market to cutting everything and then not selling anyway, even after 
even after giving myself like a big pay cut technically so because I didn't do too many sales at my price cut I increased and then I did fine so I'm keeping them kind of where they are now I feel like I've tested what prices need to be what uh, as long as my baby whales and baby frogs are five dollars I know I have something low for everyone and then all my mini hand size products are twelve dollars Anything that has more fluff or is like bigger than the $12 items gets a $12 price tag and then it just kind of jumps up to $25 with the cows because of all the sewing parts and then it jumps up to $30 with the bunnies and then it just gets higher. All my snugglers, um, right now I charge $45 for the snugglers um, across the board. Obviously if there were more parts it might be a little bit different or if it were simpler it might be a little bit different. But that's how I'm doing things right now. And then on, in my big projects, so like Penelope the Pig is big. And so are my extra large bunnies from Stitch, Cal Stitch California, Studio Stitch, those ones. Those extra large ones, um, keeping in the $55 price range. That's kind of the, the highest that I've, I have got. Uh, that's This is kind of just my like gist and what's been working and you can compare yourself to other artists you can you know you can write out exactly how much you are and you use you could decide I feel like this should be ten dollars <laughs> so you can do whatever you want to do this is just what I've done and I figured out this has kind of been working for me and then I sold a kindred spirit um I sold her the brunette I believe, yeah, brunette ballerina. She was $25 and she sold. I still have her blonde counterpart, but the brunette sold. And that was an amazing sale as well. It felt like, it, it's really nice when it's like my absolute favorite project. Like I can't stop, I can't stop making bunnies and I really like the kindred spirit pattern. So I'm really glad that people like them too. I thought Penelope the pig was going to sell today. Everyone was asking about pigs and everyone looked at her, but I think maybe because she was $55 with no outfit, maybe if I put her up for $65 with her cute like bow bottom outfit that I made for her, maybe she would have sold, but I wanted to test the waters <laughs> and obviously I'm reporting back to you. I would not do it the same way next time and in the future I will be giving them out clothed maybe for just a higher price point. But I did try selling the plushie without the clothing and just to see how people felt. But definitely I think people seeing the plushie in the outfit just draws them in more, makes them feel more attached to it. So they might have a harder time walking away. It was easier for them to walk away without really visualizing what the cuteness, the cuteness level could be. So I think I missed out there. But um, I also sold, uh, as far as mini, oh, and I sold a pocket monster. I sold it to another vendor. We did a little barter. Uh, she gave me a, it's actually, they're actually $35 uh, because of the, all the sewing parts. But the pocket monster was Squirtle. He's normally $35. I sold her for $20. Uh, and she gave me a pair of her earrings, which are super cute. And they're like wooden carved and painted. And they're really cute. So they're little mushrooms that I'm going to have to wear in the future now. They're not these. Uh, they're really cute. I don't have them with me, but she was so nice and I bargained with her and it was like the end of the market and she knew. She knew it was a slow day and I was like, girl, I'll take 20 bucks. Wait, where's your booth? And I was like, so we did a little barter. Um, her boyfriend, I guess, liked likes Pokemon and could not stop talking about Squirtle all day. So it worked out for both of us. And then I sold two little leggy froggies. I believe both of them were keychain froggies for five dollars and then I sold two baby whales for five dollars that's all the stuff that sold uh it was a total of oh and I sold a little mini Bulbasaur I had made this when I was testing out free patterns uh, I made it quite a while ago and I sold it just for 10 bucks I didn't even put it in my spreadsheet uh for 10 bucks it took me like four hours which is ridiculous but it was acrylic yarn and I remember after making that like my hands were so cramped so I and I didn't think I was going to be selling it. It's not like a part of my normal stuff that I'm going to be producing regularly, but I brought it just to have stuff and I had a little Pokemon area kind of with a couple things and I put it over there and someone bought it for $10. I brought 111 items to this market. Give or take a couple because my inventory spreadsheet was just a hot mess. I might have brought a couple more than 111. I just might not have counted everything 100%. <laughs> so... 111 and I'm ending with 94 so I sold about 17 items and out of those 17 items 220 dollars 
about was made on square. $85 was cash. This is rough, but general. And then come the fees. <laughs> the square fee was $6. The booth fee was $75. About $16 in food and gas just for the day, like the coffee and the gas. And then um, when I fill out my spreadsheet with all the stuff that I used um, and the items that sold, it estimated that I'd spent around $60 in supplies, which is like the yarn and the safety eyes, which is a lot of money. But if I just take what it's saying with, you know, it feels like because we have so much yarn, it's just always free and we do purchase the yarn. So, um... Out of like genuine profit, um, even though I made like $330, I only really brought home $150 about dollars. <laughs> um, so I didn't do bad. I definitely profited. I didn't even just break even. I definitely profited, which is good because I had to pay for tomorrow technically and there's no event happening tomorrow now. So I don't even have the option to make more for tomorrow, even if I wanted to. So $140, I'm going to pretend like I didn't just lose 75 from tomorrow. Um, but read your weather report. Uh, I, I purchased this a couple weeks ago, so I couldn't have really known it was going to rain or be stormy. But if you're better at telling the weather than me, or if you wait longer, closer to the date, you might have better odds. Okay, the stuff that did not sell is a bit longer than the stuff that did sell. And if you've already seen my other videos, then you know some of this stuff from last time. So feel free to skip over this. Uh, or if you're interested in knowing everything that I've made, let me just let you know. Hey guys, uh, this is me coming back after editing the end of this video for stuff that didn't sell. Unfortunately, um, the way that I listed everything off was not optimal. So I have the big bag of plushies here to just show you what didn't sell. I figured that might be a little bit easier and I'll still put the price up for you. And all of the patterns that I used for this entire market will be linked in a Google Doc below. I'll be using the same terms, names for the items. So, uh, to start off, I had a couple bunnies. They're $55, so I had two. And a Penelope the pig. She's somewhere in here but they're $55. These are actually two different patterns. So this is the Studio Stitch CA, and this is Am I By Abby. The head is the only real difference. The bodies are pretty similar. Studio Stitch is a bit thicker, but Am I By Abby's is a little bit thinner all over. I didn't think this through. Okay. And then I had the outfits. They were individually priced, so the onesie with ear holes was $22, and this, what would this be called, bell-bottom onesie? Bell-bottom overalls, there we go, uh, $20. Add this giraffe, he's $45, and I normally put him with the snugglers, so I have the two snugglers, the Una the Dragon, and Dusty. I always mess that up every single video. Dusty the Dragon and Una the Unicorn. So these are all $45. They're all about the same size. Pretty, pretty big. These are the Kindred Spirits. This is the only one I have left. I ended up selling her counterpart. Uh, she's $25. I do hope I can make a couple more, but I am focusing on other things right now. They're very cute and very nice to make. I have a Mushy Boy, which is a free pattern that is, he is... 20 bucks. He took me a really long time. I have not made another one. I kind of told myself while I was making the pattern, I'm never making this again. But they're really cute. And honestly, his head's really wobbly. But I don't think I'll be making another one just because it took me so long. It was also at the beginning of my journey. So that might be why he took me so long. Got the bunny loaf for $15. I only made one of these, but these are great just to have. I've got two of these lambs. They are 20 bucks. I followed Loretta Loop's cow pattern and I made it a sheep. 
I was actually trying to make a tiny sheep and I made large sheep, so I couldn't give it to the custom order I was trying to sell it to. And then I have the mallard. I sold the flamingo, so I'm just now I just got this guy. He's $20. He's a free Instagram pattern. And then I have the two princesses. I made these a long time ago. And these were my, my first dolls, actually. I have $55 for both of them. The dresses are removable, but I don't recommend removing them. <laughs> because, like, why would they would just be naked? But they are removable. And then I have three tulip book covers. But they also could be any any kind of cover. Kindle cover, iPad mini iPad covers and they have little notches in them. I had these displayed better this time. They were up high and they were on a little ladder. Um, just not the market, not the time, but I finally feel like I figured out how to display these things. <laughs> so that is something mission accomplished for sure. I feel like figured that out. The only pocket monster I have left is Pikachu. These go for $35. I've got some cows. Oh, sorry. Before the cows, um, a part of the bunny stuff. This is the dress. I charged $15 for the dress. I hate making clothing for animals, by the way. It's super cute, but I really don't like doing it. Um, and now that I have done it a couple times, I know that I don't like doing it. But it makes the things look so cute that it's like, you can't avoid doing it now. But I have, looks like I only have two of these bees left. This is Poema Studios, her Lennox the Bee, very cute. There is sewing involved, so if you wanna know Sew Bee, there is sewing involved in these. But I think they make very individual looking bees versus like the round bees that everyone sells. I am gonna be caving in and making some of those round bees though. I've been avoiding making bees and octopus and squids. I've been avoiding those. But I'm going to have to break down and make some because I have this tiny kid market coming up and I have to make them. So I really like Poema Studios bees though. They're very unique. Two of the flower buddies left. They're $20. These also take me a very long time. I kind of vowed to myself that I will not be making them for markets again unless someone custom orders one. I'm not going to be making it for like market prepping. It's not a market friendly design. But they're cute. I have an Eevee modification. I was actually Shine Crafts, Pikachu, and then JM Adorable Creations made a modification. I charged 15 for Eevee. I definitely think I could give her maybe a smile and maybe some extra. But I don't want to make her more expensive. So I was just going to leave her for 15 And when someone comes along who likes Pokemon, she will be for them. I'll be the pig. So she's also $55 and she fits in all of the outfits I already showed you. And then technically this market, I was left with both of my mer babies. I charge 45 for them. I ended up gifting the blonde one with buns to my baby sister. Uh, it was her birthday. So I did give that to her, but it didn't sell at the market. So I'm letting you know that there were two. And then I've got these two whales. They're extra large mama whales. I charged 15 for them. This was a free YouTube pattern from the Mary J. And then I've got, I think this is my last Christmas bunny. <laughs> the last Christmas bunny, Bunny the Elf. <laughs> and I think I put a price tag of 30 bucks on it. Um, I'm, I'm okay keeping it till next Christmas. <laughs> But it looks like I only got two Mabels left. That could be wrong, but I might find more later. And then these are my two cows. I charged 25 for these. They are made out of different yarn. This is Posh Big Twist, and this is Loops and Threads. So you could see just the size difference there. But I charged the same because I added this cute little sunflower to the butt. So I do charge the same price. I could add little things to all the other ones as well. I know I've seen people give them little bags and stuff. I've been thinking about it. I'm not quite sure yet what I want to do with that. And I've got a bunch of these little frogs left. 
So I've got half of them have keychains, the other half are just angry frogs. I'm not gonna add them up right now, but I will add them up later and put it on the screen here for you to let you know how many I still have. These I charge, these and the frogs are $5. So they're just easy little quick, um, tiny things for people to grab. Um, the big eggs, the tiny eggs. This one is missing an eyeball. I just noticed that. I found an eyeball when I was packing all my stuff at my last market and we could not figure out what was missing an eyeball. This is missing an eyeball. Got big and little eggs. The big eggs are $20. The little eggs were $12. Also for $12 is this little chick. These are the derpy chicks. I have two of them. Or I, or I did past tense I did have two of them I must have sold one sold the mallard version of this squishmallow um so I've got the flamingo left these I charge $12 for kind of like how I made the mallard and the flamingo snoozing long birds I made a squishy flamingo and squishy mallard and the mallard sold of this and the flamingo sold of the other uh, I found another mabel and I had this pattern test. This is, oh, I forget his name, Chip the Squirrel. This is his girlfriend. And I charged 25. I sold Chip. So this is his girlfriend. She didn't sell. The lady really wanted both. And this is the first uh, plushie I think I brought that had the sparkle eyes. So the first one that actually sold the sparkle eyes was Chip. And the only other thing is these little triceratops, and these are also $12. They're free a pattern online. I think it's QB Crochet or Club Crochet, one of those names. But they're super easy and quick and nice for hands. I do put notices on everything that says safety eyes, you know, not safe for babies, anyone under three, choking hazard. I put that everywhere. Um, but yeah, that's all the stuff that didn't sell for me. I feel like I had a pretty good outcome for what it was. There was another crochet artist uh, or two there. Um, I know she had some cows, one of the people, um, and she didn't have much, much else. Very sweet. I met all of them and they all came to my seat on my booth. I keep saying station. They kept coming to my booth um, and saying hi and I was able to say hi back and they were very friendly and very kind. Uh, the other crochet artist was, she strictly had crochet items to my understanding and she had quite a bit of them. We had some overlap and she kind of said that she was having, we were having a rough day. She was having, you know, no business, no kids, no customers. At that point, I also had no business, no kids, no customers. So I was really relating with her in the moment, but I'm glad it picked up and not every market is going to be a sellout. I am, ex I am looking forward to winter markets and I am looking forward to potentially selling on Etsy maybe, um, because the in-person setup and breakdown is a lot of work on the body. Uh, it's fun and you have a lot of inventory of a lot of stuff that you're making just because you want to make it, but it's a lot of toll. You have a lot of, a lot of weight on your shoulders. And personally, it's been giving me some sleep issues because I've been staying up so late prepping, which is a part of market prepping, but it's also stressful. So don't recommend that. Oh, it is a problem. So I'm going to be looking at maybe selling some stuff online and future like um, school events, um, signing up to be a vendor at a school, which would be cool. I did want to let you guys know I did use my Cricut. I did make the stickers. I brought 15 stickers. They were $2 a piece and they were like for, and I told you know people who asked that they were for like stationary, non-waterproof purposes, decoration. You can put them on your phone case, you know. Um, no one bought one single sticker. I had them listed um, $2 a piece or three for five, I believe. So um, not too expensive, not too cheap. I didn't want to put a price tag of 50 cents on it because I don't carry change. So that was kind of why I did the $2. I could probably sell them for a dollar, still figuring it out. Um, but I did make all of the stickers myself. So I made like a bun mom one, uh, but they didn't end up selling at all. I'm still obviously going to bring them next time and maybe make some different ones. And then for any like weaves out there, I'm really looking forward to making like fan art stickers because I want them on my stuff and I think people, I'd like to share them with the world. So 
that's where I'm at. I hope you guys had fun watching along with me. I had a fun time at this market. I had a great time with my papa and it just ended up getting cut a little bit short because of the weather. I'm definitely going to be having um, crochet talk videos because I want to talk about, I talk about this all the time and I need to kind of get it out of my system a little bit and maybe I can provide some information to you, uh, especially if you've never done a market before. Um, just some things to think about if you're thinking about having a crochet business, if you're thinking about selling uh, crochet products. Now that I've had some footholds and some doors, I'm kind of understanding how it's going. Uh, for me at least, I can maybe share some information with you about how to help you guys and uh, just make some good connections. Uh, I can't believe I've been chosen for four pattern tests already. I'm so excited to go finish a couple of them and continue helping the community. <laughs> Uh, hopefully make a pattern of my own one day and um, I'll see you guys later.